Ever wonder what it's like to fly in space? Well, hold on tight, because there goes a spaceship. Seven, six, five, four. We've gone for main engine start. We have main engine start. Kids, I'm Astronaut Dave. And I'm Astronaut Becky, but we're not real astronauts. No, but the real astronauts have agreed to let us pretend for the day so that we can all learn about space travel and the equipment they use in outer space. So join us for an adventure through space. Come on along. Flying in space starts with training, like learning how to use a jet backpack, fly moon landers, walk in space, live in space stations, then fly to the moon, and even drive a lunar rover. We're here at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida to learn all about space and what it takes to get us there. The Kennedy Space Center is where all of America's great adventures into outer space had their beginnings. So if you're ready, we're ready, let's take a look around. Come on. At the Kennedy Space Center, you can see all kinds of real space rockets. You can touch them and even look inside a real spaceship to the moon. The first American in space was a chimpanzee named Ham. Once Ham proved those first spaceships were safe, it was man's turn. In 1961, Alan Shepard was the first American astronaut in space, flying in a Mercury spacecraft that's tiny by today's standards. This ought to give you an idea of just how small the early spaceships were. This is one of the Mercury capsules, and the astronauts used to joke that you don't ride in it, you wear it. It's so small. I'm going to climb in now and show you just how tight a fit it was for the early astronauts. That big rocket back there is the Gemini Titan II. It's the rocket that powered our Gemini astronauts out into space. Let's talk a little bit about how rockets work now. Usually there are two large containers inside, one containing an explosive like kerosene, for example, and the other usually containing liquid oxygen. Now the two are mixed together under pressure and ignited. That causes a big explosion. Now that explosion is channeled downward away from the rocket ship by these things here. That causes the rocket to go whoosh, right up into space. All right, you are go. Water systems, go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. If a spaceship is heavier, or if it has to fly farther or faster, the rocket it uses has to be bigger and more powerful. This Atlas rocket made the first Earth orbits possible. Look at the size of this rocket. I'm going to jog along the side of it to give you an idea just how big it is. This is the Saturn V, the largest rocket ever built. It was used to push the Apollo astronauts into space and off to the moon. This is the first stage. It would burn for about two and a half minutes and then fall away into the ocean. The next stage, the second stage, would ignite then and push the astronauts out into space. The second stage would then fall away, and the third stage would kick into gear and fire the astronauts off to the moon. The next stage is not a rocket at all. It's where the lunar lander was kept. The stage in front of that is called the service module. It's full of all kinds of electronics. And then in front of that is the command module. It's a V-shaped unit, and that is the only unit that actually returned to Earth.
This is the command module which took all three of our astronauts from the Earth to the moon. Now two of the astronauts got in the lunar lander and landed on the surface of the moon, while one astronaut stayed inside the module and orbited the moon. Contact light. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. Anybody in there? I don't think anybody's home. Hi, kids. My name is Bert, and I'm wearing the type of spacesuit, the Apollo suits, which man wore on the moon about 25 years ago. Starting off, the suits protect the astronauts' feet from the extreme temperatures of the moon, either hot or cold. On my left leg is a pocket containing rock samples to bring back from the moon flights to Earth. And the gold visor I have here in my hand, this would protect the eyes from radiation in space. The most often asked question I get when I wear this suit is, how do you go to the bathroom in space? It's very simple. We wear a fecal containment assembly, which is really a diaper, and you just go in your pants. When our astronauts landed on the moon, this is what it looked like. And you can see this display here at the Kennedy Space Center. Back there is the big antenna that beamed their signals back to Earth. There's an astronaut standing there in his spacesuit. And of course, over here, yet to be unfolded, is the lunar rover. This is a little go-kart type of device that the astronauts drove on the surface of the moon. Come on over here. This is the actual, I guess you could call it a condo that the astronauts used on the moon. This is where they lived and worked while they stayed on the surface. Now this lower portion is the rocket engine that landed them on the moon. And all this gold is mylar. It's a protective coating that keeps the temperatures from getting too hot and damaging the equipment. That up there is where the astronauts lived when they were on the moon. That's where they slept and ate their food and did their work. It's also the part that lifted off the surface of the moon, leaving this lower portion behind and took them back to the command module, which was orbiting the moon and waiting to take them home. America's early spaceships didn't come back to Earth and land. Instead, parachutes slowed them down. Then they splashed into the ocean. Today, the shuttle takes off like a rocket, but it lands like an airplane. In space, everything is weightless, which makes eating real fun. And yes, even astronauts like M&Ms. It's catching them that's the tricky part. And you don't need a bed to sleep in space, just straps to keep you from floating around. I know what you've probably been wondering all along is where do the astronauts on the space shuttle go to the bathroom? Well, they use a device very similar to this, which is much like your toilet at home, only it also has a lot in common with a vacuum cleaner. Remember now, in space, there's no gravity, so everything floats around. And you don't want any of that kind of stuff floating around, that's for sure. So when you sit on the toilet, you've got to strap yourself in, first of all, to keep you from floating around, or you can hold on with these handles. Then the next thing you do is hook yourself up and do what you've got to do once the vacuum system is turned on. This is what the cargo bay of the space shuttle looks like, and what it does is carry payloads like this satellite into space. The doors on the top open up and out it goes. The shuttle has all kinds of different jobs. Sometimes they launch satellites, sometimes they catch and fix satellites. But whatever the job is, when it's done, the shuttle lands back on Earth just like an airplane on a very long runway. Down. Motors coming down. Two feet. One foot. When the shuttle lands in California, it has to go all the way back to Florida to fly again. So they put it on top of a 747 and fly it home. There, they fix it up and get it ready to fly again. This building behind us is the Orbiter Processing Facility, or OPF. And you can see by the special door there and the special cutout for the tail, that's where they drive the orbiter in and process it. That's right. They clean it up and prepare it for its next flight. Yeah, we've got special clearance cards, so we're going to go in and look around. Come on. Getting the shuttle ready to fly again is almost the same as preparing an airliner to fly again. 
technicians make sure that every system is working properly and the entire shuttle is safe to fly. Naturally, there are some differences, though. One of the most important jobs is to repair the shuttle's tile system. Thousands of lightweight tiles coat the bottom and edges of the shuttle. They prevent the shuttle from burning up when it re-enters the atmosphere. Behind us is the VAB building, or the Vehicle Assembly Building, and it's 52 stories high. It's the third largest building in the world with good reason. This is where the shuttle, the orbiter, is taken when it's ready to be launched. Now, they take it in flat like this, and then they hook a crane to it, and very slowly and carefully tilt it upright like this, and then it's lifted over and attached to the solid rocket boosters and the big fuel tank. And then it's mounted on top of the crawler, and it's ready for its trip to the launch pad. And then it's ready for blast off. <laughs> So how do you move a huge, heavy spaceship out of its hangar and all the way to the launch pad? Well, you do it with the biggest truck in the world, the crawler. It may be slow, but it does the job perfectly. Oh, this is neat. Behind me is one of the two shuttle launch pads here at Cape Kennedy. This is where the big rocket sits with the shuttle mounted on it. And of course, I'm standing right now in what's called the flame trench. When those big rocket engines fire off, they go creating all kinds of vibration and fire. The flames come shooting out through here. In fact, it's so hot and there's so much noise and vibration that no one is allowed within three miles of the launch pad during a blast off. The only people here, of course, are the astronauts who are riding high atop in the space shuttle. Or we've gone for main engine start. We have main engine start. <laughs> We're at the United States Space Camp near the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Kids from all over the country, just like you, come here to learn all about space and how the astronauts train. So where do we sign up? Hey, I can't wait to get my hands on the throttle in that shuttle simulator. Whoa. Let's go. Whoa, this is one of the most fun and awesome machines here at Space Camp. It's a moon gravity simulator. You see, the gravity on the moon is only about one-sixth of what it is on the Earth. So if I weigh 180 pounds on Earth, I'd weigh only 30 pounds on the moon. And of course, on the moon, you wear these spacesuits. Now, the real ones are 23 layers thick, so they're very heavy and awkward. Now, there are special moves that you have to learn if you're going to move around safely on the surface of the moon. The first one's kind of a bunny hop. This is the astronaut bunny hop. And you hop just like a bunny, and gradually you move forward. <laughs> you got to be careful you don't hop too high or you'll lose control. Now, if you want to move from side to side, you kind of do a little side shuffle. You take off on your left foot like this and land on your right foot. You take off on your left foot and land on your right foot. And if you do it right, you end up upright. Now, probably the most fun move on the moon is the astronaut jog, they call it. It's just like on the Earth, only kind of in slow motion. So you first you leap to the left foot, and then to the right foot, and then the left foot, whoa, and then the right foot, and that's how you jog on the moon. This is the Space Station Mobility Trainer. It's very important that you exercise in space because if you don't, your muscles will become very weak and your bones will become uh, brittle and start to deteriorate. So how do you exercise in space? Well, you've got to create artificial gravity to do that. You do that by using centrifugal force. Now, let me demonstrate what centrifugal force is and how it works by showing you this water in this bucket. Now, if I were to turn this bucket upside down, you'd think the water would fall out. But it doesn't if there's centrifugal force at work. Now, watch this. As I spin the bucket around, centrifugal force is created. So the water stays in the bucket. And that's the way the astronauts exercise in space. By running against the sides of the Skylab space capsule, centrifugal force is created. And that allows the astronauts to exercise, like Becky's doing. <laughs> This machine is the MMU, or Man Maneuvering Unit. It's kind of a uh, human jetpack the astronauts wear when they're out outside of the space shuttle and they have to work on satellites and that type of thing. Now this is just a simulator here at Space Camp, so it actually floats on a cushion of air. I'm going to turn that on now, and as it fires up, I'll start to float around, and then these little levers here simulate the controls the astronauts would have in space. If I want it to spin, I can push this button to roll left, 
or to roll to the right. And then this one makes me go forward. Wait a minute. This isn't quite working right. Wait a minute. Wait. Oh, whoops. Wait a minute. I don't, I don't think I don't think I quite I pushed the right button. I, I, oh, 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 oh. I'm upside down. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> I'm not really in outer space. I'm still at space camp. This is another one of the fun things here. It's called the Zero-G Wall, and it's here to show us how astronauts can work in outer space and actually build things. And Becky's about to go to work. Whoa, Dave, this is fantastic. Come on up here, let's get to work. I'm on my way. Well, I'm all strapped in, I've got my tools, I'm ready to go to work in space. So if you're ready, I'm ready, let's go. Going up. Now, Dave, yep. this is a chair that spins and it's used to disorient you, okay? Yeah, I don't get disoriented. Ah, no, you I, don't. I've never had a problem with that. That's why I'd make a good astronaut. Okay, see? all right, I believe you. Yeah, but we're gonna a, test you not anyway. Not a problem for me. Okay, now you yeah, just give me see. the thumbs up when you're ready. Okay, I am, uh, I'm ready, go. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, yeah, you can stop it now. Okay. Whoa. Here, let me see. Whoa. And how are you? Well, I'm, I'm fine. You're fine? Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad I'm, you could oh, do it. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, you never feel disoriented. <laughs> All right, astronaut Becky, you think you're pretty smart? Get a load of this. This wow. is massive. This is cool. What is it? What is it? It's the multi-axis space test inertia facility. <laughs> it simulates an out-of-control spaceship. Wow. You want to take it for a ride? Oh, I sure do. <laughs> Climb in. Okay. Are you ready? Dave, how come you're standing outside there? Because I don't want to get hurt. Hurt? <laughs> Are you ready to go? Well, yeah, but... Thumbs up. Here we go. <sighs> Hold on tight. Okay. Oh! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Dave! <laughs> Dave, stop this thing! Dave! It's really, really fun, but I think I've had enough. I get it now. Okay. Well, here it is, the orbiter. Wow. Oh, wow. She's really big, isn't she? <laughs> astronaut Becky and astronaut Dave, spaceships are under tight control. Therefore, no one is ever allowed inside without a trained instructor. Would you like to go inside? Oh, oh boy, yes. would we? Been, that's why we're here. We've been, we've been waiting for this a long time. Excuse me, <laughs> but the pressure in the 5DF air cushion seems to be a little low. Could you come show me how to adjust it, please? Sure. Uh, Becky and Dave, I need you to stay here, and when I get back, I'll show you around inside. We, we got a plane to catch. We're running out of okay. time. Okay. So don't take very long. Promise? I promise. Wow. Come here. What? Listen, I don't think, I really don't think they'd mind if we just, you know, if we went inside. Oh, long, no. As long as we didn't touch no, no, anything. No. We're, we're not just, going inside. We're just going to look uh -uh. around uh -uh. because we're going we're gonna to be Dave, late for our plane if we don't go look around. She said it's top security. We have to have oh, an instructor on, with us. Come no, on. we're not going. <laughs> Come on. Oh, wow. Look at this. <laughs> oh, Pretty cool. So I told you. Cool. A real spaceship. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. Yeah, this is neat. Oh, hey, that's a flight deck up there. Oh, let's go see. Oh, come on. Wow, look at this. Oh, wait till you see this. I can't see wait this. to get my hands on the oh. controls. Hey, listen, <laughs> watch your to... oh. head. Oh. oh, no, Dave. <sighs> are, are you okay? Dave? Dave? 
Astronaut Dave, power is on. All systems are ready. Solar 2 is ready for liftoff. Capcom, all systems are go for ignition sequence. Switching over to automation. This is your flight director. You have a green light. Prepare for launch. Houston, we are ready for ignition sequence to depart Earth orbit. Standing by. Solar 2, Solar 2, we have lost you. Come in, come in. Oh no, it's the black hole! Dave, pull up, pull up! Whoa! Pull back in the stick! Ooh. We made it. Now, Dave, according to my calculations and the computer's calculations, we are millions of miles away from Earth right now. Systems warning. Systems warning. Systems warning. Dave, we're losing power. Look, we're losing power. All main systems are going down. I'm taking it on manual. Systems warning. I'm gonna fly it through that gorge over there. Systems warning. I gotta find Systems a flat warning. place to land this baby. Fuel leak, clean engine, fuel leak, clean engine, fuel leak. Hold on tight, Becky! Okay! Dave, do something! We're going down! Brace yourself! Here we go! You okay? I think so, are you? Yeah, but I'm not sure about this ship. Oh my gosh. Where are we? Shut down all the systems. I don't know if we're losing fuel or what. Okay. Check okay. the atmosphere out okay. there. See what we got. The computer still works. We can do it. Okay, hold on. Oxygen content. Oxygen we may have a fuel content. leak. Oxygen content. We gotta get out of here. Oh, look. She blows. We have oxygen. oxygen. We do have oxygen, yes. All right, great. Okay. We won't need the backpacks. Let's just get out of here. Okay, you sure? The computer was right. The air is fine. Oxygen. Now let's go exploring. You go first. It's about a 20 foot drop. Careful. Yeah, I'll be careful. Come on, Becky. Throw me the pack. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. All right, jump. Come on, okay. quick. This baby's gonna blow. Are you all right? I'm fine. Come on, we gotta get out of here. Okay, hurry. You know, this atmosphere is rich in oxygen, Becky. Doesn't make any sense, though. We don't know of any other planets in our solar system that, that have that much minute. oxygen. Wait, what if this is a new planet and a new solar system? A giant leap from mankind, and we did it. Oh, Dave. And we did it, astronaut we did it. Becky. We did it. Now, listen, we need to try to go back to the ship and try to make contact no, with no, Earth. No, we no, need no. to let it know. The batteries are dead. There's fuel all over the place. It wouldn't be safe. We've got to explore. We've well, got to explore wait, I don't know this, about new, this. this new frontier. Yeah, but Dave, wait, 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 wait. Come the, on, Becky. No, this come could on. be scary. It really could be. Wait. Careful where you step. Okay. You know, I can't believe it. We've been we've been looking for almost two hours. 
And I still haven't found a single sign of life. I know what you mean. But you know, I've been thinking, there must be aliens living here. But wait a minute, actually, if we're the visitors, we'd be the aliens, right? Huh? left in here. Dave! Oh my gosh, you're all right. I can't believe it. Are you all right? Mm. I've been looking everywhere for you. Where have you been? Mm. I couldn't find you. Mm. You just dropped out and you were gone. Mm. What have you been doing? <clears throat> oh, I was, uh, well, you know, I fell and hit my head and I kind of needed some energy, so I was having a little snack and a little candy bar break. You ate the last candy bar? <laughs> you don't think much of your partner, do you? Well, I would hope you would Because you know that I believe that we are friends and we are partners and we should always share. Well, that's true. And that's why I saved the best part of the candy bar oh, for you. Oh, thanks, partner. And I'm really glad Better you're eat it, okay. Because we're going to need a lot of energy. We're going to climb that mountain over there. Got to continue to explore this planet. Oh, Dave, look at this mess. Yeah, whoever lives on this planet doesn't have much respect for it, do they? No, no one should ever litter. Yeah, well, one thing for sure, we're definitely not alone. No, we're not alone. Wait a minute. If that's your shadow, and this is my shadow, <laughs> whose shadow is mine? I want to go home. Look, it's, it's the ocean! Those are sailboats out there! It's Earth! We're home! <laughs> We're home! We're home! Dave, Dave, wake up! We're home! Oh, you're all right, thank goodness! Becky, I, yes. I just had this incredible dream that we blasted off in the space shuttle and we got lost in space and then we crash landed on another planet, but it wasn't another planet, it was Earth, and, and you were there, and you were... Wait a minute, who are you? I'm the space camp nurse, and you know you're not to be in here without an instructor. Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. And what's the moral of this story? Well, you should never go where you're not supposed to go, and you should always follow instructions. <laughs> Give me some more. Well, we've learned a lot about spaceships, astronauts, and all the work we've done in space. And if you'd like to learn more about space and astronauts, you can always visit your local library, or why not come to the Kennedy Space Center like us and go to space camp? Yeah, it's time for us to blast out of here now. So for Becky and Dave and our friend here, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.